Today's lesson is on using chords. Okay, when I'm saying the word chord, the H is silent, so I'm really kind of saying C-O-R-D. So this H is silent. Okay, so if I have congruent chords, then my arcs are congruent. Or if I have congruent arcs, then my chords are congruent. So if one is true, they're both true. Okay, so in the same circle or in congruent circles, if two minor arcs are congruent, if and only if their corresponding chords are congruent. So here, my chords are the segments. So if my segments are congruent, then my arcs are congruent. And the arcs are this piece right here. That's hard to see. Let's do it like this. And my arcs are congruent. So I like to kind of squirrel these so I know we're talking about arcs. Okay, and then I have another theorem. It says the perpendicular chord theorem. So perpendicular means I'm at 90 degrees. So if the diameter of a circle is perpendicular to a chord, then the diameter bisects the chord and its arc. So that's, if I see I am perpendicular right here, then I'm bisecting the chord. So this chord is bisected in half, and then the arcs from here to here, these are also congruent. So these are congruent. Okay. Let's practice. So if circle P is congruent to circle Q and chord FG is congruent to chord JK and the measure of arc JK is 80 degrees, find the measure of arc FG. So if this chord is congruent, then the arcs are congruent. So the chord and the arcs, so this arc is 80 degrees. Okay, so if circle P and circle Q are congruent, FG and FK, chords FG and FK are congruent, and the measure of arc JK is 120. What is the measure of arc FG? So this would be 120. How'd you do? All right, let's do one a little bit more complicated. Find the distance from H to K. So here's the distance from H to K. So I'm looking for chord H to K. Okay. If I and the distance from arc H to K. So I'm also looking for the arc. Okay, so that would be from here to here. So in order to find the arc, I know I need to find the value of x. All right, so let's set up. So this is saying I am perpendicular. So from that previous theorem, it said if I'm perpendicular to a chord, then I bisect the chord. So if I bisect the chord, I also bisected the arcs. So my two arcs are congruent. So I can say since H to K, H to K is equal to 
H2N plus N2K. I'm going to substitute these in. So I know if this is 7, I know this is 7. So 7 plus 7. So I know the distance from H to K equals 14. So I got the first one. Now let's set up and do the arcs. So I know my two arcs are congruent. So I can say 11x equals 70 plus x. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides. So I have 10x equals 70. Divide by 10 and I get x equals 7. So to find the measure of arc hk, so hk is the whole arc, I'm going to substitute in. So 11 times 7 is 77. So 70 plus 7 is 77. So the whole arc from H to K is 77 plus 77, which is 154. And arcs are in degrees. Okay. If the measure of arc AB is 110 degrees, find the measure of arc BC. So from A to B, this is 110 degrees. Since I see my two chords are equal, so the arc that goes with this chord is congruent with the arc that goes with this chord. So this is also 110 degrees. So if the chords are congruent, then the arcs are congruent. Okay, it's that big picture. Okay, let's do number five. So if the measure of arc AC is 150 degrees, so this is 150, find the measure of arc AB. So it's asking me to find this arc. So I see these two arcs are congruent. I'm sorry, these two chords are congruent. So that would make these two arcs congruent. And I know if I add up all the way around, that's 360. So I can say x plus x plus 150 equals 360 degrees. So 2x plus 150 equals 360. I can subtract 150 from both sides. So I get 2x equals 210 degrees. Divide by 2 and I get x is 105 degrees. Okay, the equidistant chords theorem. If the same circle, in the same circle or in congruent circles, two chords are congruent if and only if they are equidistant from the center. Okay, so equidistant. So this is where I'm talking about an equidistant from the center here. So segment AB is congruent to segment CD if and only if arc AB is congruent with arc CD. Okay, so let's do an example here. So I see that segment QR is congruent to segment ST, which is 16. 
So QR to ST is 16. I also see that I'm perpendicular, so I'm bisected in half. So if the whole thing is 16, I know each half is 8. Okay, so in C to U equals 2X. So from C to U is 2X. And C to V from here to here is 5X minus 9. So I know these are equidistant. So I can set up an equation that says C to U is congruent to C to V. So I'm going to substitute in 2X equals 5X minus 9. So I'm going to solve for x. So I'm going to subtract 2x and subtract 2x. So I get 0 equals 3x minus 9. So I'm going to add 9. 9 equals 3x. I'm going to divide by 3 and I get x equals 3. So I'm trying to find cu. So cu equals 5x minus 9. So this is 5 times 3. I'm sorry. cu. cu is 2 x. So 2 times 3, which is 6. Okay, so I got Cu. All right, so next, so here is 1, 2, 1. Find Q to U. So Q to U we found First, actually, Q to U equals 8. And 3. Is find C to Q. So C to Q. So this is forming a triangle. So this we said... C to U is 6. So if it's easier, I would draw this here. Here's C, U, and Q. And this is 8 and 6. And I'm trying to find C to Q. So I'm a right triangle. So this is the Pythagorean theorem. So C to Q, I'm solving for the hypotenuse. So that's 8 squared plus 6 squared. So 8 times 8 is 64 plus 36, which is the square root of 100, which is 10. So C, Q equals 10. And C to Q is the radius. Okay, we're done.